Hi guys, it's Joe here from Rufio. Welcome to the channel. If this is your first time here, welcome aboard. You should definitely consider hitting subscribe and the notification bell before you go any further and realize how fucking garbage this content is. And if this is not your first time on the channel and you're one of them little weirdos who's decided to come back for some more, well, greetings, I guess. But in either case, thank you very much for coming along. I do really appreciate you being here. Today's video, we're going to be taking a look at the deck I was running previously to all of this nonsense that's happened in the last little while. Invoked Shadol Dogmatica. Deck is still absolutely doing bits. It's still a really solid pick if you want to play in a way that can really punish your opponents if they're not ready for you. Again, this is going to be largely based off my old build, so there may not be too much that's changed from that. However, I have some thoughts and ideas going into the new format that I wanted to share with you all, and I've put that into this deck. If by chance you're watching this video and you're feeling inspired to go out and pick up some Yu-Gi-Oh! singles, or even Pokemon ones for that matter, you should consider checking out the channel sponsors, Jam Jam Cards UK. There is a link in the description to their eBay store that will get you a nice cheeky discount, courtesy of yours truly. But anyway, that's enough waffling on from me. Let's get stuck in to the deck profile. So for today's video, as discussed, we're looking at the Invoked Shadol Dogmatica list that I've been working with and playing with a little bit. And again, it's not too dissimilar to the kind of thing I was playing before the whole lockdown happened, so don't expect to see too much changed here. But again, for those of you who are kept out of the loop, this is the kind of thing that we would be playing. So we start off with two copies of Fleur de Lis. I find that two copies of Fleur de Lis is absolutely perfect. Sometimes I kind of want extra copies in there, but to be honest with you, with running Maximus, we've got enough targets in here that this seems to be working absolutely fine. This is obviously just a really good way to interrupt your opponent, but more often than not, you're actually just using it to push for additional damage. We then have a single copy of Maximus. This is something I never used to include in my lists, but to be honest with you, there's so many powerful combo decks out there that can't afford to lose important pieces, particularly with Dragon Link being so prevalent in this new format. At least it seems like it's going to be that way. This is a really good way of dealing with that. And honestly, if you can protect this card after two or three turns, your opponent's lost the game, um, which I know two or three turns is a long time in Yu-Gi-Oh, but honestly, this deck has so much protection that this is a really viable possibility. We then have triple copies of Ecclesia. I think this is pretty self-explanatory. Triple copies of Ecclesia, one of the most important cards in the deck. We have triple copies of Alice to the Invoker because, you know, it's the best normal summon in the deck. Uh, definitely one of the best normal summons in the game, quite frankly. And this engine is just absolutely insane. And it's still no different now than it was even a year ago. And then for our hand traps, we have triple copies of Ash Blossom and Joyous Spring. It's honestly the best hand trap in basically every single format. It's at least hits almost in every deck in some way or another. So three copies of this is pretty much mandatory in my opinion. And triple copies of Nibiru. Again, as some decks are just auto lose to this, so you kind of have to have it in there. Now, we'll make a shout out at the moment that you could definitely consider running Gamma and Driver if you wanted to in your builds. This is entirely up to you. This is just the particular build that I wanted to go with. We then have triple copies of Nadir's Servant. This card is absolutely insane. Many people expected this to have been hit already on the list, but it hasn't. It's still here. It's still available. So we absolutely have to play it. This is what, basically the entire reason that you even run this engine is for this card. We have triple copies of triple tactic talents. I hate fucking saying that. Seriously though, this deck does struggle with hand traps interrupting it, and with only one copy of Call by the Grave, it's a little bit harder to get by. Triple Tactic Talents gives you a way to continue to play, and punishes your opponent for interrupting you in the first place. And given Alistair is one of the biggest hand trap magnets in the game, this is going to help you. We then move on with triple copies of Pot of Desires. If you don't see your starter cards in your hand, you just basically instantly lose. And this gets you over that line. Now, if you're one of those lucky people who does open the nuts, you can activate this afterwards to seal the deal against your opponent. We then have triple copies of Invocation. Once upon a time, I used to just run two copies of this. But honestly, with the amount of times that Alistair just gets hit in this deck, it's absolutely insane. And there are times where Alistair's really the only thing that you open. And by having this in your hand, it gives you a way to be able to play the game. It also means if your opponent drolls you after you've normal summoned Alistair and you already have the Invocation, you're normally in a decent place. And following on from that, of course, if Alistair does get hit, this gives you another way to continue to play. Triple copies of Forbidden Droplet. This card is absolutely bonkers and only seems to get stronger with each format. Pretty self-explanatory. This card just wins games in and of its own. 
We then have triple copies of Magical Meltdown, another one of those cards that people thought was going to have been hit by now, but it hasn't. The engine is still very much alive, and you absolutely have to play it. This deck is all about those fusion summons, and this is just going to go ahead and protect those for you. And we run Field Spells, so we are running Mystic Mine. I know a lot of people hate this card, but you're running a slightly larger than normal build. So, of course, this can benefit you for decking out your opponent. There's a lot of the time where you can play this, and it just ends the game. If your opponent doesn't have back row removal, this is an instant win button, and there's no reason you shouldn't be playing it during turn one, uh, game one even. And then you can just side it out as and when you don't need it beyond that. And a single copy of Terraforming. Again, we're playing Field Spells, so you have to play it. Running the single copy of Call by the Grave, it's at 1. If it was at 3, we'd definitely be playing more than this. Uh, but 1 is just a, such a powerful card and you need to play it. Triple copies of Infinite Impermanence. We have a total of 9 hand traps in here. This is normally enough to deal with most of your opponents. Everything else is so compact that this is just insane. Also the fact that if you open this along with your normal standard combo, it's just another really good line of interruption against your opponent, particularly if you're going first. Running two copies of Dogmatica Punishment. Honestly, this card just gets more and more powerful. The more I use it, the more I feel like I want more and more copies of it. I do feel that three is too much, but if you do happen to open the second one and you can search the other, it's absolutely insane. And then, of course, Shadol Schism. This is the whole reason we even play the Shadol package in the first place. This just gives you such free access to those extra deck monsters. And then we move on to our extra deck here. This is a little bit jumbled up, so apologies about that. But we have two copies of Mechaba here. I think two is absolutely perfect. Sometimes I feel like cutting one to add some other stuff to the extra deck. The extra deck is quite tight, so that's definitely a possibility of something you may want to do. But I think two is perfect. It just gives you that way to continue going forward, especially later on in the game. If you can make a second one, you're in a good position. We have a single copy of Shadol Construct. Uh, I mean, Shadol Engine. I don't really need to add more to that. Two copies of Titanoclad. Uh, well, it does what it says on the tin. It searches cards. It searches cards for your engine. It's a big body, so it enables punishment to be even stronger as well. All of that good stuff. We have a single copy of Orgoades here. I think this card is really slept on, and if you're not playing it, you're a fucking idiot. This card is so broken. So many people don't know what it does, and it does just flat out win games. In fact, I can't remember a time where I've ever summoned this that I haven't gone on to win the game. A single copy of Purga Trio because it's a big boy, it's easy enough to make, and it smashes the fuck out of your opponent. What's not to like about that? A single copy of App Cologne and a single copy of Winder. Pretty self-explanatory, our best other Shadol options that we have in here. And these are all the ones you need. Just one copy of each is perfect. We have two copies of Elder Entity Entis. Uh, Entis is just for obviously popping cards when you send it from the extra deck. It's just a fucking insane card and we absolutely love it. We have a single copy of Skull Knight in here. This is just for another interrupt from your graveyard. This can be swapped out with so many other things. It's unreal. I just really like having it in here. We have a single copy of Omega. This is for obviously dumping from the extra deck and being able to recycle stuff from your grave. There's added benefits to this, of course, if you are running Gamma and Driver, and that's definitely a possibility. Uh, but in the meantime, this is just perfectly good in this extra deck as well. And then we have one copy of Segur Gardner and one copy of Almirage. These are obviously just for our Alistair plays, being able to easily link him off and get materials on the field for our fusion summons. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is all for today's deck profile. Hopefully, by virtue of the fact that you made it this far, you've enjoyed it enough to have hit subscribe and the notification bell, or at least hate it enough that you couldn't possibly look away. It's worth noting that this isn't the only kind of content we normally do on the channel. We are in a bit of a slew at the moment with deck profiles due to the nature of things going on in the world. And I'm sure you know what I mean. I just don't want to get demonetized. But anyway, that's enough waffling on from me and taking up all your goddamn time. Thank you very much for coming along and hopefully I'll see you in the next one. This content is brought to you in association with my buddies over at Jam Jam Cards UK. You can find the links to the eBay store and the Facebook page in the description.